<laughs> Hello, world. Welcome back to D and D Beyond Live. Uh, I'm Joe. I'm I'm the 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 dumb idiot face that makes things here. Uh, I'm joined by a, a much better, smarter, more brilliant, more capable uh, human being in the form of Melly. Welcome back. Oh, you keep going, keep going, Joe. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> you know, uh, acrobatic. Uh, athletic uh, Olympian in stature. Um, okay, well, now, now I can tell that it's fake. It's fine. Uh, yeah, hi. I'm glad to be here. It's. I feel like it's been a while since I've seen um, this face and this chat, and I'm really excited to be back here. It's been a minute. Well, hey, we're going to do something fun question mark i always hate uh it, i always hate insisting that something's going to be fun because i feel like a bad substitute teacher that sits you in their chair backwards fun. if you're yeah. tuning in today you better have fun or else you guys are gonna have a great time hey guys math can be cool <laughs> <laughs> um uh today uh i thought this is something i really like to do uh we're going to uh build a uh, a starter town uh together uh and not just you and me melly but all the chat, all the chat, we're gonna do this together. Um, as you know, uh, I come uh, uh, from the world of comedy writing, which is uh, which is a pathetic and sad thing to say. Um, and uh, but one of my very favorite things um, uh, about that world is is the writers' room, right? Um, uh, working together to sort of like throw ideas at the table and kind of see what sticks. And uh, before I was a member of a writer's room, I was even sadder. I did a lot of improv, Melly. Um, and so I really like uh, the idea of, you know, yes and, and sort of combining that with the uh, opening it up to the writer's room, I think leads to some really bizarre and interesting uh, choices that you would have never really gotten to on your own. Uh, so today, Absolutely. yeah, we're gonna make a little bit of starter of, of a starter town. And if you'll help me, Melly, sort of like, sort of chat through this, <laughs> Aaron Moore, <laughs> chat says, Joe, you even look like a sub. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> I am, yes. Just got the whole look. We need to get you like a periodic <laughs> table of elements behind you. The moment, the moment this ends, I go directly to a random elementary school with like a few DVDs to show to the kids. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be like, where do you want me? Um, <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we're gonna create um, a starter town uh, together. Again, this is, this is one of my very favorite things uh, to do, Melium. Uh, so if you'll sort of help me sort of chat through this. And I, even if, yeah. um, you know, if you're like, hey, Joe, have you thought about this? And we haven't really talked about this yet. Feel free to yank the conversation away from me. Because again, you are a much more accomplished pilot than I am. Yeah. And I always appreciate you being here. So uh, we're going to... Uh, we're gonna warm. We're we're gonna warm up together, Melly. Does that okay. sound good? And we're also gonna warm up chat. We're gonna get everybody's like creative juices uh, flowing in the. We're in, the, in, the, in those juices, so going. everybody yes. get your juice boxes ready. Yes, it's it's gonna be amazing. Uh, so what I really want from chat, and this is gonna be so stupid and so hokey, but you're. I just want you guys to get in there and do it with me. I just want everyone in chat to just like drop their favorite animal. Uh, into chat. It can be a dinosaur. It can be uh, a, a breed of dog. Uh, it can be absolutely anything. Melly, thank you for leading by example and actually doing it. I really appreciate it. Uh, I do, oh, sorry, <laughs> you want me to say it out loud? I was writing it down on my little sheet of paper. No, uh, you crocodiles. actually, no, you don't. Yeah, I didn't That's know that the, you loved crocodiles. I love so crocodiles. Uh, they're very cool. I also love that when you say crocodile in Spanish, it sounds Russian. Something about that just makes me really happy. <laughs> That's, I, I, yep, I actually, uh, we're gonna note that for later. <laughs> uh, and now I want everyone uh, to, uh, oh, now yeah. that everybody's done, oh, there's some good stuff. We got, Owls, yeah, we got lots of good stuff. We got bunnies, red pandas. corgis, animated bunnies. What? Okay, I didn't now, know there was, okay. now oh, an even tougher challenge. I, I want everyone to uh, to put in their second, or no, their, their least favorite animal. If the, such a thing exists, just an animal that you're kind of like, no, thank you. Oh. Um, I don't need I, I don't need to be around you. Uh, no, thank you, animal. Um, for instance, I respect Komodo dragons, but no, thank you, Komodo dragons. Uh, you'll kill me. You'll eat my ribs. Yeah, I feel like we've really shifted to uh, like other than you, people are a, a going to fish and bugs. So mm -hmm. 
uh, and snakes, squids. Perfect. And now, uh, and now, chat. We're gonna uh, we're gonna just avatar the heck out of this thing. And I want to take. I want you to take favorite animal's name and your no thank you animal's name and smash them together into one animal. And now you've created something brand new. Uh, and I, I cannot wait to see these because I've seen red pandas, I've seen beetles, I've seen sharks, I've seen deer. <laughs> Kirby Masterhand's no thank you animal is a deer. I love that. An otter possum, a polar roach. And an owl eetle. Oh Love this. Oh my gosh. Corgi cats, unicorn prime. <laughs> a standard poodle snake. I like that. A standard poodle snake. That's so good. Ankylosaur, ankylos, ankylosaurus slugs, um, uh, an angler lynx. Ooh, an angler lynx. Uh, uh, a roach hawk. Oh man, these are just. <laughs> uh, a tricera not... shark. I don't like uh, the, a centa hog is not, I don't like lots of legs. I'm cool with snakes because they don't have any legs, but like things that have way too many, it just feels wrong. And I But don't... that said, uh, I'm very cool with a centa hog and Vaxim, I'm so happy that, that you threw that in there. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, okay, cool, we're warmed up. We've all made ridiculous uh, creatures. Um, I feel good. We put some nightmares into Melly's face. Um, <sighs> Which I'm, oh, a lot of people agree. A uh, Melipede. Oh, Logan. Yeah, no, I don't want. What I have you know. done? Melly doesn't even want to participate in having like, no, too many legs. No, I don't legs. like. Yeah, there's just too much, too many things. Every, like, I know there's like bugs and they're very harmless and they just exist, but I'm just like, ugh, could you not in my yeah. line of sight? You can exist, but just not here. Not here. Right. I, no, I get it. I get it. I understand. So, okay. So here's what we're going to start with. So, you know, um, I, I, I don't know if the kids still play SimCity, but I certainly did back in the day. And uh, yeah. when you when you play uh, uh, SimCity, you don't start with a town. You don't even start with an outline of town. You just start with a space. You start with an area. Uh, so I want to start creating uh, an area uh, with chat. And so the way this is going to work, chat, is you guys just start firing stuff off. And just like we do with the animals, I'm going to sort of start trying to combine some of these ideas. It's my job as the head writer to sort of coalesce uh, the brilliance of you guys, uh, my writer's room. Um, so what's this like? And one of my favorite things, by the way, about the Forgotten Realms is you can throw anything in the Forgotten Realms. It doesn't matter. Uh, if, it is, whatever. Yeah, if it's fantasy themed, you, you perfect. Yeah, it's it. yeah. We love yeah, it. You can, yeah, you don't know what's four miles outside of Baldur's Gate. There could be anything. Um, I mean, technically we do know some things that are within four miles of Baldur's Gate, but you take my point. Um, so that said, what's this like area? Uh, like, is there, is it a, is it a forest? Um, is it, is it a harsh tundra? Are there many lakes? Um, Tell us the terrain. Cause right now we have the suggestion of a pool. There's a pool. Of, of, I do like a pool that. of what? STS-2884, a pool of what? I would like to know. If, okay, so, so, so there's can't, okay, see, look, look, here we go. A charred, uh, a charred series of underground uh, areas within a canyon. Uh, boom, already, already. And there uh, sounds like, you know, in a canyon with, with underground, it sounds like there could be pools there, pools of things. Yeah, no, absolutely. Underground, sort of charred area. Um, I absolutely, absolutely dig that. Uh, yeah, there's like, there's black lava um, and um, and a single tree growing out of sand um, is, Damn. that is a great, great starting area. Uh, and I'm writing all of this down furiously. I think guys, yeah, once this... I sort of get all this down, I'm going to make maybe a PDF of this and like share it. I don't know. Um, yeah, I like that this is, is not, usual starting towns, you know, we think of something that is very classic fantasy. It's green and there's trees and there's, you know, an inn and it's pretty generally pleasant and inoffensive. And we've come up with charred underground black lava tree growing out of sand. This is a I, much I, more frightening starting town. And I'm, I'm digging it. I feel like we're getting yeah. into like a Van Richten's Ravenloft uh, sort of uh, theme yeah. here. Yeah, I'm digging this. And and uh, and thank you very much, Melly, for tying our current pre-sale into the stream. Uh, something I had been unable to do yet. That's why you're a professional. Um, uh, uh, so yeah, I absolutely dig this. So, uh, so now we're going to talk about, um, this, this town. And I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, not a village, maybe not quite a bustling city, you know, a town, it's a starter town, right? You know, um, 
middle America, but in this weird, horrible, charred canyon. Um, <laughs> Dark Abyss Keeper says, it's a starting town. You have a reason to leave. Yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so no, I dig that. Um, yeah, I also so like that we have Dark Abyss Keeper also said black lava so could be tar pits. And we had lots of dinosaur themed suggestions. And I feel like there's not enough dinosaurs used, even though they're in the monster manuals and stuff. So maybe we need to tie in some fun dinosaur stuff. Is this place a little, a little dinosaur-y? Yeah, it's a little dinosaur -y. Okay, cool. I think I saw a Tricera hawk earlier. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we okay. also have a Tricera shark was mentioned. Tricera shark, that's what I saw, which mm -hmm. in this area I feel like is also a land shark. So I'm also just gonna note Tricera shark as a, as a, as a monster in this place. So in, okay, in history, so... the tar pits might've been the enemy of the dinosaurs, but with the Tricera shark. Yeah. That's uh -uh, its uh -uh. home turf. Yeah, no, I, I, so, okay, so I dig this. So we have, so we sort of have our, our vision. And so what I like about this, guys, is um, we tell stories by, sorry, I'm going to get all preachy. I really like stuff like this. Uh, we tell stories by answering questions, right? And we do it every day. Uh, the first time um, Melly met me, the first time I met Melly, you immediately start just like asking little questions about the person, right? And you start, as a human being, you start trying to fill in questions. Okay, she's got like a lot of really cool board games. She wears like fly shirts, you know, like, uh, you know, like, what, what, okay, what's the deal? Like, what's the story of this person? We do it all the time. It's literally like storytelling is literally a survival instinct for us. Yeah, Joe um, Moonlight is a substitute teacher. No. One of the things that we learn. <laughs> Absolutely. I wish I could just turn this whole armchair around and sit in it backwards um, uh, and just be like, hey, guys, today to learn about Scotland, we're watching Braveheart. Um, or at least that's what they did uh, in my Kentucky public education. Thanks, Kentucky. Um, uh, so we so to, to, to sort of tie that back in, we've answered some very simple questions about terrain. Um, and all of a sudden we have, I feel like a pretty good idea about uh, the theme of this area, the atmosphere, like just the feeling of it. Uh, it's, I don't think this is a happy place. Um, the imagery of a single tree in sand is like, there's, there's so many questions that we can now ask around that. Yeah, um, exactly. Like this tree has to be significant in some way, 100%. Yeah. Absolutely. And we will definitely uh, get back to it. But the first thing um, I want to uh, ask you guys is where did I put my notes for this episode? Here they are. Uh, the second thing uh, that I really want um, to ask you guys, uh, before we get into the name of the town and, and stuff like this, I want to ask you guys about the most um, important part of, of a starter town, the part, the place where you're always going to end up, the place where you're always going to go look for quests, the place where you're always going to meet NPCs. Uh, I want to talk about the inn. I want to talk about that tavern. I want to talk about mm -hmm. that inn. Uh, so chat, I just want to know in whatever this weird place Hi. is, this, this place where most of the, 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 most everything is either in the walls or underground, uh, which is so cool. Um, what's the name of this I inn? Oh yeah, the name. I mean, I do see a really cool suggestion of hot sulfur springs. Oh, I uh, okay. Oh, so there's like a bathhouse situation like with I think hot maybe, sulfur you know, springs maybe at like the inn. The, yeah, maybe the inn is in this place, more of a bathhouse. We got the Dino Dive Dry Gulch Saloon. Ooh. I like dry Ooh. Gulch. Dry, I like, I like, uh, uh, I'm going to combine them because I like alliteration. I'm calling it the Dry Gulch, yeah. the Dry Gulch Dive. Sand pits, um, the scar pits, scale and ale. Ooh, I like scale and ale too. Yeah, okay, scale like and ale, scale and ale. Yeah, oh, that's, that's good. That's a really good um, one. I, I kind of like that this kind of feels, especially with the underground and this kind of more maybe rougher place. It has kind of that dwarvish uh, feeling to it for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how about how about this? So it's the, it's the dry gulch springs and that's the sulfur springs, yeah? Um, yeah. And then, and then the scale and ale, uh, Vaxum, uh, great, I loved it. Uh, the Ben Rarfest. Uh, the scale and ale is the name of the bar inside the hot springs. Uh, you know, just like the, you know, the bar at the Marriott always has a cool name, and it's always a very classy place. Always a very high quality, uh, classy place. Yeah. This episode brought to you by the Marriott. Um, come stay here because, um, so. 
Okay, so we have this idea of so now now it's just a couple of questions that we that we've uh, that we've answered. We have so much more than an in. We have this whole like elaborate uh, sulfur springs uh, bathhouse. Uh, so now this place, not only is this place just sort of desolate and sad, but it's kind of toxic, um, which I, which I completely dig. So I want to know, uh, from you guys, um, uh, so we've, we've named it, who all are we going to meet in this mm. inn? I want to know, uh, I want to know who works here. Um, I want to know uh you know the, who the regulars are like if if cheers was set at the scale and ale um i want to know uh who all is there i'm regulars. thinking yeah i'm thinking the owner yeah just just because of the word ale and because i'm a vicious stereotyper it's probably a dwarf maybe is kind of yeah, what i'm and thinking i mean i like that you know maybe we have uh, a couple of people who who run the what is it? The Dry Gulch Springs. I feel like we could get a water genasi and a fire genasi, maybe a couple, or they're like brothers and Working sisters. They've got the same like human parent, but two different genie parents. <laughs> it's a very complicated mixed family. It's a family. very complicated relationship. So I have some cool stuff coming in. So uh, uh, Mirari15 says, Rex. I love Granny Rex. And I love the, so, okay. So I'm writing down Granny Rex and uh, my first thought is like, is Granny Rex a dragonborn? But then I'm kind of like, is Granny Rex the elderly lady grandma dwarf yes. that owns the tavern and she's famous yes. because she's brought down a T-Rex single-handedly, or at least yes. that's the tale, right? I okay. absolutely love it. And I just feel like even though she's really getting on in years, she's definitely at the end of her dwarven life. She's still the toughest uh, yeah. dwarf in this town. Yeah. No, yeah, no, she's ridiculous. She has an imp familiar. I dig that. PDT. Uh, uh, she, yeah, she has an imp familiar. I'm totally, totally into that. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, so we have some ideas too for like, uh, you know, a couple people are sort of naming the barkeep and um, who's going to run this place. We have a kobold uh, barkeep. Maybe the, there's a, um, you know, there's a kobold uh, bouncer. Yeah. Uh, that works at this place. Uh, I like this suggestion of a Kenku singer because Kenkus don't have original uh, words they can say. <laughs> they just repeat things. So like, where do they, have they gotten all these songs? It's like they got a whole jukebox in there. I actually, actually really like that a lot. They do have like a very sweet uh, uh, jukebox. Yeah, okay, that's cool. from uh, Solari or Killary. Sorry if I pronounced I love that. that. I'm trying to scroll back up and chat because, okay, so we have... Um, uh, ba, 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 ba. Someone was yeah, the at... Kenku's name is Duke. Yeah, P uh, P T two seven six. Love it. I absolutely dig that. Um, ba, 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 ba. Man, someone had like a cool, just like adventurer regular, and I lost it. Uh, um, was it the Gith Yankee or the? There's a green yeah, it was. It was the, yeah, yeah, the Gith Yankee female uh, who who was looking uh, for an escape uh, from her yeah. violent life. Um, so I dig that a lot. So that goes in Gith Yankee. Uh, mercenary, ex-mercenary. Because um, this is definitely a place, you know, you don't really come here because you want to, right? Um, so I, You were I born here, totally you're that. hiding from something, you're escaping mm -hmm. from something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then, look, we also have a, 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 a straight-up cooking sitcom going on in the back because we're going to have this Dampier cook and we're going to have a Minotaur um, in the back. So we have a very... Very diverse Weird. place. Yeah, a, yeah, it is a very diverse place. I I, I applaud it. Uh, diversity improves everything, even weird sulfur hot springs. Uh, so I, I absolutely dig that. Okay, so cool. So um, so I want to sort of sit back. Yeah, the Minotaur is like a definite like Gordon Ramsay. I'm super into that. Um, so already here, uh, Melly, I feel like there's tons of opportunities for you know to be able to start quests and and stuff like that um you know uh granny rex you know uh supposedly took down this t-rex maybe she didn't she probably didn't and has tasked our adventurers for to hunt it like finally um you know and kind or of quietly like, kill it you know the t-rex and her have an agreement maybe it's a sentient an awakened t-rex and so, you know, they've got sort of a, a deal going on. Maybe there's some uh, 
a little bit of subterfuge to this relationship and uh i dig that maybe she's trying yeah she's trying to one up the uh this uh this awakened <laughs> This awakened T Rex. I love this. Uh, and she, you know, she's gonna send you on a quest. Uh, you know, we have this. Uh, we have this cobalt bouncer. Um, maybe there's been, you know, some local trouble or with some other visitors that keep coming up and causing problems. You know, at the springs, the cobalt bouncer uh, has requested your help. Um, uh, this Kenku singer, you know, in its catalog, there might very, very well be, you know, a song that's actually a cry for help or, you know, a quest that they just, you know, overheard. What if they overheard somebody's Princess Leia being like, hey, we need you to do this because of this, please help yeah. me. Um, uh, you know, we have this mercenary uh, that's that's on the run and hiding. They might need help sort of, uh, maybe maybe whoever's after her um, is getting too close, right? And, uh, and and she needs help and then- Yeah, or maybe she, she left a job unfinished and she knows she can't do it, but maybe somebody else can and, you know, she'll take a cut if you know she'll give you the info to go and finish yeah no started. yeah i totally i totally dig this okay so we have this big um like sulfur springs uh in which i which i completely dig so uh, here's okay so here's our next interesting challenge because this place um is is in such like a desolate area yeah. but every starter town needs that like Oh, just up the road is the haunted forest, but no one ever goes in there, you know. But there is an item of great power and blah, 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 blah. See, this place is really having an enchanted forest. But let's yeah, talk about I... what it is. So, chat, I want to know what is the um, the nearest sort of piece of big ge uh, geography um, we the near this town? Pool. Oh, we have. It, oh, yeah, actually, uh, so in in a world that I I've run, I have blood swamps. So it's like these plants that seep blood into the water, uh, and it's gross, but it you know can be helpful for you know rejuvenating your skin in a nasty right. kind of way. If you're a nasty well, boy. Well, we have doing, some stuff. We have things. some stuff. Boom, boom, boom. That I think all goes together really well. So we have we have the blood pools, right? Uh, yeah. Which to me looks like. Um, Oh, what are the weird swamps that Gollum leads Frodo and Sam through? The the dead. Bleh, bleh, bleh. My wife's gonna yell at me if she hears me not being able to remember it. Uh, the dead lights, you know that that's it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's that, but it's bloods. Um, and yeah. then sort of within the blood pools. And let me scroll back up chat just for a second. You know we have these uh, these uh, maybe some of them like lead to caverns um, <laughs> underneath. And we have this uh, Thamphir cook. So now we've got mm -hmm. these blood pools and these like haunted caverns. So do we have vampires nearby? Yeah, or maybe he just needs a fetch quest every now and then because he <laughs> drinks from the blood pools, but he can't get off work because the life of a short order cook is rough. Really? Uh, yeah, it's and he a needs you to go. schedule. <laughs> yeah, but this is also a dinosaur graveyard, uh, which I dig. So uh, this is where dinosaurs Go to die. The dead marshes is what people are calling it in. Uh... Dead marshes is the yes. Thank you, thank you, chat. Uh, I'm a fake nerd, and I absolutely <laughs> apologize. Um, I also okay, want to cool. raise because uh, I one thing that you know we've got the underdark, and you know we always think of drow and duragar and all of those things, but also the underdark is you know where we find mind flares and aberration type things. Mm -hmm. uh, how how to those tie in how do those tie into this place that is so deep underground and also we've got this awakened t-rex how does that tie into psionic abilities because maybe that's a tie-in yes no I absolutely and i think sort of that stuff can definitely like start sort of building into some of like the bigger ideas about like what's going on uh in this place but okay so we have we have our general idea for the town we have a starting in and then we have a place where people need to go and you know if you ask me that is more than enough for a really great session of DD. and it would make me so happy if you guys went back to your to your crews and did a one shot with this with yeah. just fresh characters or whatever I, uh that would be so fun i want to know about them on our discord yes Melly. i have one thing that i think every starting town needs because we have like the thing that you know everybody kind of knows this this is a place but i wanted to know like what is the most interesting thing that 
very few people know about? What is the secret thing? I love that. Yes, now? every every uh, town needs a secret. And I think once we have the answer of your question, that will tie really nicely in to uh, my next uh, question, which I think will be very cool. And uh, I was about to start reading just people just sharing the giveaways. Um, <laughs> yes, there's a giveaway uh, <laughs> in chat. If you haven't noticed, definitely do that. <laughs> Please, uh, yeah, so. Also, tell us what the secret of this town is, because we want to know. And we, we need your... <laughs> Chili uh, Draw says it's a T-Rex Ethid. Oh, which is so good. Oh, a Mind Flayer T-Rex? Come on. Oh, I'm writing that down. Oh, yeah. Just like... We have Tricera Sharks and Mind Flayer T-Rexes, uh, which Mind Flayer T-Rex. Can we just have I'm like a really incredible theory for this? Uh, yes, this monster, like, wow. this monster up. This, this town this is secretly book's be run dope. by a coven of gnome vampires. <laughs> you know what? Underground? Yes. You know what? Yes, and. Uh, so we have this coven, the, we have this, uh, this coven of gnome vampires. They've been around for ages. And, um, uh, but they, they're not like, they're not like traditional, like blood drinking vampires. Uh, they've, they've, uh, they've literally like fed on the health of the land. And that's why this place is so desolate. Ooh. Uh, and they're, uh, yeah. And they're gnomes and man, they just suck. Um, they're the worst gnomes. Um, okay. So gnome vampires and they might not actually run the area but they're like the scourge of the area right everyone like lives in fear of them yeah so well these. we have those like underground caverns by the blood swamps so we've got like this uh you know their their presence is sort of heard of but not straight up known and they yeah yeah, they're just yeah, like they're... sucking. Well, it's, it's also a nice, uh, I love metaphor in my fantasy games. So you Not know that me, that's a teach metaphor me politics of, out of my genre, lady. Sorry. Of, uh, of oil, of, of, you know, them seeping out of here and creating this desolate mm -hmm. landscape because they're taking everything out of the land itself and leaving behind what they do. Yeah. No, I absolutely yeah. love that. So, so we have our Baba Yaga, right? We have our, uh, we have our story that people tell to kind of keep the kids in line that are absolutely definitely real, you know? Um, so then what I want to ask is who is in charge of this town? Because I think this is another just sort of like simple question you can ask that's then going to just like answer a whole lot of other questions mm -hmm. about the town. So I want to know about who rules this place. Um, I mean, really unofficially, I feel like we all agree that Granny Rex yeah, officially yeah. runs the town. Yeah, no, absolutely. Who's the I, figurehead. Yeah, who, who? Yeah, I want to know who the figurehead is. Um, uh, <laughs> Granny Rex is is paying off the vampires by sending random travelers to them. Oh, Granny Rex, you you hurt me. Blood you Absolutely hurt me. Okay, so we have a cleric named Portia in charge. I dig that. Uh, so we have this. Um, so we have this halfway. Everyone's everyone's either a giant or very small in this town, uh, which yeah. I appreciate. So we have. Portia the cleric runs things, um, but now I want to know like what what's their like uh, is Portia uh, doing her best? Um, is she yeah. is she benevolent? Is does she suck? Is she kind of a weird dictator? Yeah, how how is she working in this place when you know there's these this dark presence all around? Mm -hmm. Like she's mm -hmm. a cleric. Hey, yeah, we need to no, write yeah, some letters to council if if this is really still going on. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, we also have, uh, someone said John and then, yeah. Oh, the same person said three goblins in a trench coat named John. So <laughs> we have to, uh, uh, they're her, um, her staff. Yeah. Yeah. They're her staff. Perfect. They're her staff. Uh, so yeah, they must have some kind of like, I feel like they're, they were four kobolds in a trench coat, but one of them split off and is now the bodyguard at the, at the yes. tavern. Yeah, no, I'm absolutely into that. What if the uh, these goblins are psionically linked, and so they sort of have to act as like one figure? It's like an, the next step up from like twin speak. So um, saying, uh, Imarari says, uh, doesn't she doesn't understand anything, Portia? It goes all over her head because she's a half. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I dig that. Uh, and then she's Ghost Report says, yeah, trying her best, but she's sort of relatively like new uh, to the role. Uh, and uh, uh, the illiterate Aussie says she's she's almost like at her breaking point because of just yeah. like how it is out here. So yeah, so I like this. We have this person, um, you know, we have this like man with no name, John Wayne type character that came to the town at some point. 
um, drifted in for whatever reason and is now just like de facto in charge of it and sort of very in over her head and yeah. kind of like uh, doing her best. I totally she's, dig that. She's the new, new blood. She's got this new, these new ideas, these new ways of doing things. She wants to like really make this place like she wants to save it. But this is really a place steeped in the traditions that they've had and the, you know, the, a lot of the people here are like Granny Rex. They're, they've been here for forever. They're not budging. Mm -hmm. And I like what uh, Ghost in Your Ice uh, said is that she's in a power struggle with somebody that everybody looks over to, looks up to. They all kind of check in with Granny Rex. Like, is this okay? Yeah. So she's, and, she doesn't have all the power. Yeah. Even though she's... Grant Granny Rex uh, respects our uh, our town's Baba Yaga, the uh, the, the the illustrious uh, uh, vampire gnomes. Um, yeah, exactly. So yeah, so we have this this power struggle set up. This is super fun. Uh, so here's here's the kicker, and here's where we're gonna leave this today because I feel like you could run a month of sessions on. on I'm this. already There's... like I would like to play in this world a lot. Yeah. And this is one of my very favorite things to do because you you just you just come up with such like weird locations that you I, I wouldn't have otherwise right so this place is just absolutely um insane and i and i and i and i really like it um uh but here's here's what we we've got to do melly uh the town has to be named this yeah this 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 this, this town um uh in a canyon in this in this desolate region you know with the houses sort of built up the walls on the side and in and in the caverns below uh this place needs a name um this this place con under constant assault by tricera sharks and a mind flayer t-rex um uh and uh oh logan someday we'll make flavor town blood gorge uh, Ooh, i like yeah I, I i like that oh melliville that's nice <laughs> Uh, that's I, mean, very it's, sweet. I mean, it's a very like horrible place, though. It's very scary. You know, I don't know if I want that named after me. There's some. There's something to be said just about an on, an you know, an on the nose name, and you know the you know in Arrested Development, the the meme with the bag that says "Dead Bird, Do Not Eat," and he opens up the bag, and then he's like, "I don't know what I expected." I I like the idea of hearing about a town called Blood Gorge, going to this town and going like, "Yeah, yeah, you know what? Sure, that tracks." I, also like what Vaxdom has said, which is Portia's renamed it. So it's Blood Gorge. It's Blood She's Gorge. renamed it though. She's changed it. She wants it to be better, but everybody still calls it Blood Gorge. Well, they know sure. it is Blood Gorge. Well, that's a funny, that's even a way to set up that power dynamic like instantly without telling your players that it's going on. You know, your players are told to go to the town of Blood Gorge and when they show up, you know, there's signs everywhere that, that are calling it something else. They're, that are calling it like- uh, What's the nice uh, name folks? What's the happy yeah, name? So, yeah, uh, uh, Tarmonia Village. Potential. I did, okay, yeah. Why Tarmonia Meister says, Village? Because it's still like, this is what we are. We can't be dishonest about it. But yeah. it sounds nice. We've kind of added like a little, uh, we've added some cursive to our name. Yeah, and maybe maybe Tarmonia is the name of this cleric's uh, deity. Um, mm. uh, which, you know, kind of even adds a few levels to her because as nice and as well-intentioned as she is, don't name my town after your god. Uh, that's no good, Portia. Um, uh, so, okay, cool. cool. Tarmonia. Now I'm really need... curious about this god. We're yeah, just okay. creating a whole world here now. But yeah, and then here we go. But now uh, when we come back to this, we got to figure out like, okay, who's Tarmonia? What's their deal? Uh, so look at this. So I, I, I'm i going to try, uh, if I have some time, to actually put this together as a nice little uh, PDF. And we'll try to share it at some point. But um, I think this is a really cool stopping point. And this is, I mean, you got to, you got at least two sessions out of this, I think, mm -hmm. if, if, we've, if we've done our job. And uh, uh, if all of us have done our job, right? Thank you guys so, so much for jumping in and doing this goofy thing with me. I don't know if people are going to watch it. I don't know if people are going to like it or click on it. But this is one of my favorite things uh, to do with D&D is to just build stuff uh, with a little bit of group mind. Because again, you always end up with something absolutely, absolutely bizarre. Uh, well, so I appreciate if, you, you guys know... hanging out you didn't come away with liking, uh, you know, Blood Gorge, Termonia Village, you know, maybe you jumped onto some of the other ideas that came up in the conversation, or maybe you just said, mm -hmm. hey, I like this idea of doing this process with my group, because you could bring this to your party and create a starting town together for your campaign. You can involve them in that process. 
Absolutely. And then they're gonna Absolutely. invest themselves into it immediately because they're gonna be like, oh, I created Granny Rex. So like yes. I love her already. Yeah, I'm gonna be so stoked when when she pops up. Yeah, no, you are absolutely, absolutely right. Um, and you know, it's it's a it's a different kind of enjoyment at the table than being surprised and being like, well, because you know, they all had a hand in it, but it's it's seeing something that they made. Uh, kind of come to life. So uh, again, like I would like to have that joy. So, you know, if any of you do end up using this uh, with your group, uh, and if you don't have a group, go to the D&D Beyond Discord uh, and find yourself a group. You will get a group and uh, you deserve that D&D session. So I really hope that you do it. Uh, I want to know uh, what happens. I want to know I want to know how the game went. I want to know what happens with Granny Rex. I want to know what happens with these vampire gnomes and the, and, and the blood swamp. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys so, so much uh, for hanging out with us today. I'm very invested in this town now. Um, uh, uh, let me do business things uh, for business stuff that we're supposed to handle. Uh, uh, Van Richten's Guide uh, to Ravenloft, obviously you guys know it's it's on pre-order right now. Uh, we'll be dropping, uh, we'll be revealing and announcing pre-order perks like soon. Uh, everybody's working really hard on it. Uh, I mentioned in the dev update today that I've heard some of the concepts for the digital dice and some of the backdrops and, and uh, character frames and themes and stuff like that. And they're really, 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 really cool. Um, and I know that I work here. Uh, and I know that you're like, you're paid to say that they're cool. And I'm like, yeah, I am. Like, I can't hide from that. But also, they are like they, they really really are i also just happen to work in a very cool place ah, they're, they're they're very good um and then they uh aaron lord thank you very much has been has been dropping uh, a link into the chat uh i will be running a um a one shot for jasper's game week um along with some very very cool people including mod garrett uh, uh, so you can bid on a spot at that table. They've been dropping the link in there. Really appreciate you guys uh, getting involved in that. And also really appreciate you guys sort of like letting me sort of come into the community and come into the space to really talk about some of that stuff. Cause I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to come in and kick the door down and be real preachy and stuff like that. But at the same time, I feel like it's important. Um, hey, thank you guys so, so much for being here. And uh, me and Melly, we'll see you next time on d, d Beyond. Thanks, guys. Take care of each other. Be safe. Ha, 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 ha.